Coming up right now on Lifestyle Magazine, a prominent former pornography producer speaks out. Here are your hosts, Mike and Gail Tucker. Pornography has invaded our movie and television screens, newsstands, and the Internet. For too many of us, the product is attractive and enticing. Perhaps it would lose some of its attraction if people could see behind the scene, the dark side of the porn industry. Our guest today has been there and back. Donnie Pauling is an ex-pornography producer who has, by the grace of God, returned to his Christian roots. Welcome to Lifestyle Magazine. Welcome. We're glad you're here. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah. So how did you grow up? Um, I was raised in a Christian home, a very strict Pentecostal home. Um, my father was actually a pastor. Mm -hmm. um, Your father was a pastor. You yeah. went from there to pornography industry. I did. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, so we tell me more about this childhood. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the churches that we were raised in, I, I don't have any ill will towards my parents at all, but the churches that we were raised in mm -hmm. were very legalistic. Um, God was more a list of things that you can and can't do. Do this, mm. don't do that. Than a, someone that you have a relationship with. Wow. Yeah. And I would see my father's congregation and how they acted in, in church. And then my parents, they made the mistake of speaking openly in front of my brother and I about what was going on behind the scenes. Yeah, I see. They'd have their conversations so and we'd over here. maybe you knew more than you should have known as children. Right, yeah. About there's people's these, faults. And absolutely. Hmm. You know, the, some of the people that so many respected, I would hear these horrible things about what they were doing. I understand. Mm. Mm. And I built up a hatred and resentment towards everything relating to the church. I mm. didn't know it then, I only know it recently actually, that I was confusing God with the people that claimed to represent Him. Right, right. That's and so the, common. Yeah, and there was a lot of hypocrisy there is what you're, right. you're looking at. Yeah, so the, the hypocrisy just made it so I wanted nothing to do with it, especially during my teenage years. Is yeah. that right? You know, I'd, instead of really rebelling against my parents, I rebelled more against God and the church. Mm -hmm. so. Well, these people represented him after all. Right, that's yeah. the, in my teenage mind, you know, growing <clears throat> up, there's always people in the church that you look up to. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's sometimes a mistake that, you know, that we that we tend to do that because for me when they would fall it would just reinforce to me that this is just this yeah. is just yeah. not real this is no so, this is no shock these are bad people anyway right at what point then did you kind of move away from the church um, you know I moved in with my aunt during my senior year of high school so I could take a calculus course for a for a scholarship I was wanting to do mm -hmm. and I met a young girl there who actually lived her faith and so I tried throughout high school my senior year and then the years a few years after to re remain a Christian mm -hmm. but inside there was a war going on I didn't really want it to be a part of it so I mm -hmm. would say that it was probably my senior year of high school into college where I'm kind of warring with myself about whether or not I want to actually be a part of it and choosing that I didn't. Mm. Yeah. So you made the decision not to be a part of it Yeah. and what, where did you go from there? Well, what happened was I, I ended up getting married to the girl that I mentioned, mm -hmm. and she'd lived her faith. I mean, you yeah. know, we dated for four years, and she we were still she, pure when we got married. Mm -hmm. And and she um, didn't know that I was hiding things behind her back. For example, when she would be at work, I'd be looking on the internet at pornography. And pornography. Yeah. And um, and as I started to see the kind of money that could be made. Mm -hmm and the way that I could throw this in the face of the people that I had come to hate all my life. Mm. It was just this progression where I, you know, for three years I hid behind her back that I had started producing it part time. I started contacting the sites I liked. And so you had already been producing pornography before your wife found out? Yeah, for three years. For, for three, three years. years I hid it. Wow. I'd drop a hint every now and then, you know, hoping that she'd go along with me. Yeah. But it, She wasn't going. No, she wasn't buying. No. 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 She had actually a relationship with Jesus, which is something I didn't have even though I'd grown up in church. Yeah. Sure. So how did this affect your marriage? When I finally came clean with her, it ended it. What happened is uh, I was producing part-time. Mm -hmm. um, behind her back. She thought that I had a technology consulting business. Mm -hmm. um, she didn't have any questions about that because mm -hmm. it wasn't something that interested her, nor did she understand computer networking yeah. and things like yeah. that. So I called her from a show that I attended, a convention for the pornography in industry mm -hmm. in uh, Phoenix, Arizona, and I told her 
what was really going on. Yeah. And uh, after that weekend, it was over. That Is was that right? Yeah, so yeah, she, she divorced you? You know, she didn't <clears throat> make me immediately go down the path of divorce. She wanted me to take time alone, mm -hmm. try to reconcile with God, try to get back in the place. But I was so bitter by that time that once I had the freedom being out on my own, I quickly found a girlfriend and I just, 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 went just left it behind. I just le left oh, it behind. Man. So yeah. you say you were producing yeah. porn. Tell us more about that. Well, I started off producing photos only mm -hmm. for websites because I started in 1997 and the internet didn't have the bandwidth capabilities yeah. that we do now. Mm -hmm. So people would only download photos. Videos were too big. Mm -hmm. And so I started off by doing photos of girls posing all by themselves for different, different websites. Mm -hmm. And I happened to... Um, start with a company that was pretty well known and because of being able to produce for them other companies just kind of pulled me in and had me and had me do the same thing for for their sites and so I started getting bigger and bigger the first month I didn't have to hide it the first month after I told my ex-wife what mm -hmm. I was doing mm -hmm. I made fifty thousand three hundred and fifty dollars in just photo sales in, in one oh, month in one goodness. month so there really is a lot of money in this industry there was especially Huge. then yeah. yeah. Is that part of what drew you into it to begin with or were you just kind of Yeah, you know, it was the combination it? of the money, the ability to throw this back in the faces of Christians, of Christians. Mm -hmm. because I was very open with what I did. Mm -hmm. And also the the idea of I mean, frankly, working around naked girls. You mm -hmm. know, I had always been looking at it and attracted to it, mm -hmm. and so I was thinking, man, what better way to make money? I mean, I've got it. so it fulfilled several different, you yeah. know, needs yeah. I guess. Do, do you ever view yourself as having been a, addicted to pornography? You know I try not to wear that but the the fact of the matter is I probably was because I would go home and you know before when I was only doing it part-time yeah mm -hmm. I would you know I would be late for meetings and stuff because I'm looking online and I see you know and I would be up at night when my wife's asleep and you know the typical thing that I hear all over the country yeah. from mm -hmm. men that I talk to. Mm -hmm. So it was con controlling your time and yeah. your attention. And yeah. Yeah. yeah, and taking you away from your family. Well, Absolutely. Well, we want to hear how you got out of the industry and uh, what, what changes have taken place in your life since then, but we need to do that after our break. So we'll be back in about two minutes with more. longevity and a better quality of life from your friends at the Seventh-day Adventist Church by visiting www.healthylifeinfo.com. No matter where you live, life in the ocean depends on you. Do your part to help protect it. Recycle and dispose of your trash properly. To learn what you can do, go to keepoceansclean.org. The truth is in here. Discoveronline.org. The truth is in here. Discoveronline.org. Welcome back. We're having a discussion today about pornography and the porn industry and the, the effect that it can have on people. We want to talk a little bit more with Donnie 
about what was the effect it was having on you to be involved in the in the porn industry you were producing what effect did that personally have on you at the beginning it was exciting yeah. Yeah. Um, the excitement ha didn't last very long and um, I used to tell my best friend who who always was begging to come along on one of my shoots that he didn't want to because it would ruin his intimate life with his wife and he oh. didn't believe me and finally one day he he came along and afterward he says you're right that's it would that would kill my sex life wow. and so um, that's exactly kind of the way that it was affecting me there were it was not at all the fantasy I'd always thought it would be mm -hmm. um, and I was slowly becoming accustomed to things that used to repulse me Oh, really? um, I, you know, porn is progressive. You, lose you don't your sensitivity. Absolutely, yeah. and and you know, at the beginning of my career, I would go into conventions and see things that would just turn my stomach. Yeah. By the end of it, they were just no big deal. Yeah. yeah. So it it kind of is like a dark cloud that that kind of moves over your life, and you can either acknowledge it or pretend it's not there and justify mm -hmm. it and that's what so I did. So what, what keeps you doing it or what keeps anyone doing that if that's the effect it's having? For me it was freedom, money and the ability to keep throwing this in the faces of people that I meet from my Christian past. Yeah. I mean wow. I lived for Amazing the moment. Amazing the effect that that had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was so full of anger and bitterness. Yeah. I mean uh, 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 hatred toward Christians, hatred's not a strong enough word. I see. Yeah. I mean, I just despised them. Yeah. And I would so live for the day. Just look at this, watch this. Right, yeah. absolutely. Because, wow. you know what, I would, I would live for the day when I could meet someone from one of my father's congregations and have that catch-up conversation, you know, where people say, well, what are you yeah, doing now? Yeah, what are you doing now? And yeah. I'd tell them. And they'd think I was joking at first. Yeah. And, then, and then I'd see that they're getting ready to let me have it. And I would say, wait, you know, mm -hmm. before you... Yeah. Eat, you know, tear into me. Let me ask you a question. I don't want to hear your answer because you're probably going to be lying to me. But have you ever looked at pornography oh, or wow. consumed it in any way? Because if you have, we're in this boat together. Yeah. You know, without the supply and demand, wow. without you yeah. creating the demand, I couldn't be making money creating supply. the supply. Yeah. So what was it that you wanted to say to me? <laughs> and I just, I just lived for that. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. uh, that's a good point, though. You know, yeah. if people were not looking at it, no one would make money off of right. it. What does this do to the women involved in in, in uh, pornography? You know, first of all, before I go into how it involves them, I'd like to clear up a myth. A lot of people think that those in porn are broken people, but that's not the case, not in this day and age. Mm -hmm. um, these are college girls. Yeah. They're going to school for a degree. They could work at, you know, a coffee shop and bring mm -hmm. home $200 every few weeks or work for me and bring home 500 a day. Wow. So in our society, we've made porn cool. You know, there's yeah. some celebrities that are only famous because of some sort of a tape that they did with yeah, someone else. That's true. Right. And so we have kids going to school wearing shirts that say porn star on them like yeah. it's cool. Yeah. So that enforces in their mind that it's okay. So these girls, yeah. they'd start off, they would be normal college so girls and they would be excited the first few weeks yeah. and then I would just watch the lights turn off in their eyes. Is that right? Mm. Absolutely. So every time, even though going in, they thought it's no big deal. Everybody, you know, this looks at this, does this. Yeah. It had its effect. It did, and it wasn't very long before they're calling me and crying and begging and pleading and saying, you know, Donnie, I've always been a daddy's girl, but today he walked out of his office and my and his car was covered with photos of me and his buddies were with him and he doesn't want to talk to me anymore and you know, there's just story oh, after story sad. of sad. what has happened to, yeah. to girls. Well, and and when you got that call, or typically when a producer would get that call, um, does that just kind of, are they able to get out of it? Are they able to stop, or are they locked into it in some way? You know, one thing that happens and people don't think about when they're getting into doing it is that the content never goes away. When mm. the person in the, in the video or in the photos is a grandmother, they're still going to have content. photos and content circulating. Mm -hmm. of what they've done so it affects them long term I've had girls that have worked for me that have gone on to complete their degree and then lost jobs because, because of, of what they've done because you can't get it back right it's out there it's absolutely out there I understand oh. you have a letter from someone who used to work for you she's now engaged yeah and she, her future husband has found the material yeah would you read to us just a, a portion of that letter because she she wants this 
taken out, taken away, doesn't she? Yeah, you could kind of sense the desperation in her voice. I'll just read a paragraph yeah. of it. Yeah. It says, I know I did those pics, and all she did was softcore photos, just photos just by photos. herself. Mm -hmm. And yes, it was my fault, but I want to get them off the internet. Is there any way possible to do that ASAP? I will pay you the money back, whatever it takes. This will and is ruining my life. I am fearful that his friends will see him and torture him about it, or the people I work with in the military. I'm absolutely sick over this. I can't eat or sleep, and I honestly don't know what to do. I swear to you, I never thought this would happen. I mean, there are a million girls on the internet. Why me? And because you're supposed to be a changed man into God and everything, please, I need to know that you understand my situation and find it in your heart to help me. This is destroying me. I know I'm 100% responsible for taking the pictures. It's my fault, but it was a long time ago. I was single and I needed the money. But isn't there in it anything that you could do to help me now, please? Wow. And she goes on, oh, oh. and it's heartbreaking. Yeah, and that is heartbreaking. That she's desperate. You she's just desperate. hear it. Yeah. And there's nothing I could do because this is not. It's not your material anymore. Right, and, and it's, and out it's there. so common. Oh. What she's asking for is yeah. common. Yeah. Girls regretting what they've done. Yeah. And uh, once it's once it's out there, then it's circulating. It never comes back. It and never it's comes not back. being no, re removed. You know, you don't know where who's clicked what and sent it where. And somebody else owns the material. Yeah. It's, right. it's every place. And besides, if the adult companies remove the content for every model that wanted it removed afterwards, yeah. there'd be nothing left. Uh, because because all pretty much everyone regrets it at oh, some point. Oh, I recruited 500 girls in my career, first timers, and not one of them ever came back and said thanks, you know, for yeah. getting involved Yay. in porn. Yeah. Uh -huh. You know, yeah. but but mm -hmm. the devastation goes over and over again. I mean, yeah. I, there's story after story that I could tell. That's got to weigh heavy on your heart. Yeah. That you yeah. recruited 500 girls. I, re I apologized to everyone I could find, and um, I've even interviewed some of them for Christian radio stations and stuff mm -hmm. that have since come to know Christ because that's something that does happen. Yeah, you know yeah. they read my blog or my website and and they'll contact me and say, hey, you know, reading your story brought me to Jesus, or mm -hmm. I was I came to Jesus and now I can forgive you, or you know it's so encouraging yeah. to hear that you're mm -hmm. finally apologizing. Yeah, yeah. you well, know. Well, Donnie, in just a minute, I want to learn how you came to Jesus. Okay. And how that got you out of the porn industry. We'll hear that story and more in just a minute. Stay tuned. In 1977, an eight-year-old boy picked up the game of golf from his father. The odds of that same boy then making it to the U.S. and European pro golf tours? One in seven million. The odds of the Big Easy winning the U.S. Open twice? One in 1.2 billion. The odds of him having a child diagnosed with autism? One in 150. Ernie Else encourages you to learn the signs at autismspeaks.org. Some secrets are meant to be kept. Some are meant to be shared. But the secrets that matter most are the secrets of the kingdom. Somewhere secrets of the kingdom will take your children on an audio quest they will want to experience again and again. Children. Your what children will follow their guide, Silversong, one, as he takes them on a journey to a most special one, place called the kingdom, to meet someone who loves them very much. Look, the this wholesome story of faith, Jordan's prayer, hope, and love is dramatically created with narration, dialogue, sound kingdom, effects, and songs. Shining, Secrets the of the Kingdom is available on CD or cassette for $9.95 plus shipping. Just call our toll-free number, 888 Nine four zero 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 six two. That's eight 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 nine four zero 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 six two. And ask for Secrets of the Kingdom on CD or cassette. Secrets of the Kingdom. Let the adventure begin today. No matter where you live, life in the ocean depends on you. To help protect our ocean, recycle and dispose of your trash properly. <laughs> to learn what you can do, go to keepoceansclean.org. We're talking to Donnie, who was involved in the porn industry, but by the grace of God, got out. Now, before we hear how you got out, when you were producing, how did this affect your family? Well, it, it tore apart my family, my personal and immediate family, um, so my wife, wife 
and my one-year-old son. Your son. When, when my wife and I separated, he was one. Yeah. So I'm a scoundrel. I wear that. I left a woman with a one-year-old baby wow. alone mm. for pornography. For pornography. And what she went through was absolutely horrible. I mean, I went through a lot, too. I mean, I was yeah. crying all the time. And, yeah. mm -hmm. But, you know, and then, and then her family mm -hmm. was highly affected. They're a very mm -hmm. close, tight-knit family. Yeah. I mean, it just, we wouldn't have enough time to talk about yeah. How, yeah. how much it impacted everybody. How and my father, of course, yeah. was a pastor. Yeah, it impacted him. So. Yeah. Tell me about your son, though. My little boy, he's amazing. I've never lost contact with him. I mean, it would have been easy to just turn and walk away like so many dads do, but that wasn't me. I love my son. Mm -hmm. That's the one thing I was very proud of. Mm -hmm. And so we had a very close relationship. And one day he was talking to his mama and, you know, he was saying basically actually to me, he says, Dad, you should teach Brian, his uncle, to do what you do for a job. And I said, well, a lot of people don't like what I do for a job and he says I do and I just kind of laughed and you know and said yeah. you know like he doesn't have any idea uh -huh. but later he told his mama I know what daddy does for work he takes pictures of girls without their shirts on so my tiny little oh. boy is getting oh. because he's so close to me and he loves me he thinks that this what is I'm okay. doing is cool Absolutely. Yeah. so on top of all the lives I'm shattering I'm also like Affecting getting the impacted. life of your son yeah and I'm sitting there oh my yeah. goodness you know so what got you out what was the turning point? There was a missionary group I met one year at a porn convention. The adult industry has conventions all over the country, mm -hmm. and the biggest is in Las Vegas every January. Mm -hmm. And normally you walk down the convention center f halls, and there are picketers outside that are telling us about how we're going to hell and right. how bad it's going to burn. How terrible and you are. It does nothing except oh, make no. me more angry. It fuels yeah. the fire. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so I get inside, and there's this group inside with the booth and it said xxxchurch.com the number one christian porn site so i went straight there because i thought they were making fun of christians yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah well it turns out that they were youth pastors who had noticed what was happening in their youth groups and decided to do something about it by going directly to the porn industry wow. and they would do crazy things like they would do makeup for the girls and tell them that they're beautiful and that God loves them and that there's nothing that they could ever do that wow. would make him love them any less wow. and that they had they thought that they had more to offer you know and if yeah. they need help come and talk to us and just a loving approach and I'd, I'd spew my hatred and venom on them uh -huh. yeah. and they would always respond in love so over the course of four years they broke down my hatred with love wow. and once the hatred was what removed a contrast yeah it was just amazing with. yeah just totally different it was all about a relationship yeah. and a God that loves you and that, you know, there's nothing that you could do that would make him not want to wrap his arms around uh -huh. you and drag you out of whatever pit you're in. Yeah. So when the hatred was gone? When the hatred was gone, I couldn't justify what I was doing anymore. Yeah. You know, and so I started going through a lot of personal tor turmoil in my personal life and in, and in my business life and being on vacations and getting letters from girls that are just yeah. like having their lives ripped apart yeah. by what I do. Yeah. And it's all tearing me down to a humble place where I start praying again. Wow. And, and the turning point came on a day when Playboy, who I'd been producing for um, the last 18 months of my career, when they offered me $4,000 a day for a new series, um, on top of what I was already making, they wanted me to produce this new series for them. And I left their office talking to one of their vice presidents and on the drive home I, I prayed and I says you know God it doesn't seem to matter what I do you want to bless me all full of ego yeah. you know? uh -huh. Uh -huh. and right after I said that I, it was just like God just touched me it was almost like a, it, it took my breath away yeah. uh -huh. and it was like God saying this is so empty I have so much more for you wow. and I didn't want to do it anymore I didn't give him my life that immediate day. I told, I started trying to bargain with him. Yeah, yeah. And I said, if you'll answer all the questions that I have from my past that don't make sense yeah. to me, I'll give you my life. And mm -hmm. I didn't hear anything from him the next two weeks. It was miserable. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't pick up a camera to produce, uh -huh. but I didn't want to give him my life. Finally, I got it. Yeah. And I says, you know what, God, I'm going to trust you, and I'm going to give you my life. And so I surrendered my life to him in the car while I was driving. Wow. 
and the very next day the triple x church group mm -hmm. flew out one of their pastors from michigan to spend time with me and help me get strong wonderful yeah. what a blessing Man, I, I wish we had more time to talk about this and what a blessing that they took that approach yeah yeah the yeah. approach of love that's it, the only just, thing that works yeah. love changes thank you everything. so much donnie Man. thank you we'll be back with a final word right after this stay tuned we'll be right back <laughs> What's going on, TC? Oh, hey. <laughs> it doesn't take much to make this world a better place. Miguel, please, don't do it. All it takes is a hand. What about yours? Brought to you by the Seventh-day Adventist Church. It doesn't take much to make this world a better place. All it takes is a hand. What about yours? This message was brought to you by the Seventh-day Adventists. For God so loved the world. God loved me so much. That he gave his only son. His one and only son. And whoever believes in him. That whosoever believeth in him. That anyone who believes in him will not die. I'm not going to die. But have everlasting life. Everlasting life. Everlasting life. Beautiful, no matter how you say it. For more on John 3.16 and other texts, go to myfavoritetext.com. Just before we close today, we want to get a final word from Donnie about what your life is like now. Now that you're out of the porn industry, what is it like? I'm actually a seminary student. I'm enrolled in seminary. <laughs> and there's a contrast. I own a business that supports both me and the ex-wife that I hurt. She works for me and we're great friends. Wonderful. And I travel and speak at churches and universities all over the country. I've spoken now to more than four million people. Wow. including a, a debate at Yale University that was aired on Nightline ABC. So it was just like God wow. can use all things for good. He, really he can, can use all That's things right. for good, and he certainly he will do it. had a powerful impact in your life. Thank you for sharing your story with us today. I think it's been encouraging to us. Yeah. And thank you for being a part of this one as well. We will see you again next time. And until then, you take care of yourself. Bye-bye. As you know from our show, pornography is much more pervasive than you may have ever thought. If you or someone you know is caught in its clutches, call 888-940-0062 and ask for the information on pornography or go to our website at lifestyle.org.